ah, it feels great just knowing that we'll start to come back together in the month of October. Remember, you have to make a reservation and you have to wear a mask and follow the safety protocols. If you don't want to do that, continue to stay home and watch us on Zoom. We still love you very, very much, and we are really looking forward to all being together really soon. So now, of course, in our teaching, in the science of mind, we work on being the most loving person that we can be, and we are forgiving, and we're practicing gratitude. We do all these wonderful things that we do on a daily basis for the purpose of expanding our consciousness, to be more aware that all that we see, all that we experience is the activity of the divine. It's all God in perfect form. And you know, because we are a metaphysical church, we believe there is more to the story than what we see with our physical eyes or perceive with our five senses. We believe that beyond this physical dimension that we experience here, there is a spiritual dimension where all is absolutely well, where there is only perfection, where that divine blueprint for each and every one of us exists. <sighs> when we're in a crisis, it seems to me that what happens is we get through, right? Because we do, we do actually get through. And on the other side of a crisis, of a difficulty, of a challenge, of a growth opportunity, or as I used to call them, AFCOs, another fine growth opportunity, what there is is an experience of new life. There is always new life. So to me, we live in a time when we must remember God, we have to remember the truth every moment to not get hooked, to not get caught up in the news or the conversation around us. You know, it's every moment. It's the way for spiritually minded people to get through. Now, um, I have recently talked about uh, turning off the volume on the TV and saying the love prayer, I bless you, I accept you, or I bless this, I accept this, to the TV. And I want you to know, I did not ask you that in vain. I have been practicing that almost every, yeah, every day. Every day, I have been blessing and accepting and blessing and accepting and blessing and accepting, and I don't even need to hear what people are saying. Isn't that the most extraordinary spiritual practice? I just love it. And you know what? On the other side of that, what I receive is a greater sense of peace. I get more peaceful when I bless you and I accept you. I get more peaceful when I bless this situation and I accept this situation. So I find in this time that one of the things I have to do again and again is I have to surrender. You know, as much as I try to control, <laughs> to be on top of things, to have my hand on things, uh, so much feels completely out of my control, and I suspect that's probably the same for, me, for you. So a deep level of surrender often comes when we have to just stay with something. Now, I don't think any of us believe that we'd be doing this six months after we started this. You know, so here we are just enduring. Um, and I think for myself, after years in the teaching of the science of mind, I really understand now that when people are dealing with sickness, when there's pain, when uh, someone is dying, it is not in any way, shape, or form a spiritual failure. See, uh, people are not bad metaphysicians because they get sick or they have a challenge in their life. You know, because people then always say, when they have a difficulty like that, they say, oh, but did I pray enough? Did I meditate enough? Was I not practicing the principles? What was wrong with me? I should have affirmed more. I should have visualized. Oh, they, you know, people go to what they must have done wrong. Look, everything, everything, everything we go through is an opportunity for us to be more of the person we could be. In other words, everything we go through is an opportunity for us to be more conscious, more loving, more evolved. I want us to cultivate the consciousness that says, yes, I go through things, but I always come out on the other side. That's the consciousness I want us to cultivate in the week ahead. Yes, we have experiences, we have growth opportunities, but we get through them. And we come out on the other side actually a little more polished, a little more grown up. 
We think, well, how, how is this possible that I always come out on the other side? Well, it comes down to a very simple teaching that comes from wonderful, wonderful Emmett Fox, one of my favorite teachers in metaphysics. And he gave this teaching of the golden key. And the golden key is very, very simple. And it's just this. Don't think about the problem. Think about God instead. And whenever you're tempted to pick up the problem, pick up some God thought instead. And when you want to talk about the problem, talk about God instead. And when you want to imagine the problem, imagine God instead. <gasps> And what happens is that which was the problem, the difficulty gets transformed, it gets lifted up. See, so we go through difficulties and we want to lean into the power and presence within us, which is what we're doing when we're practicing the golden key. We're sort of leaning into that power. Le oh, here's the difficulty. I need to get closer to God. I need to be closer to that presence of the living spirit. You know, and what happens out of that is that we come out better than we were before because there's some level of healing. There's some level of forgiveness. There's some level of transformation that takes place. And when that does, we are not the same. When something changes on the inside, we are bound to experience change, growth, and healing on the outside. You know, can anybody really say everything should just go on as it has always been? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. And part of this is that consciousness is evolving. Nothing stays the same. I know we don't like that. We want things to just be the same sometimes. Can it be like it was? The answer is no. That's it. The answer is no. It cannot be like it was. That was then. This is now. That water's already gone under the bridge. Why don't we embrace what's happening today? See, the principle of life always, always demands, it necessitates more from us, that we give more to life. So the difficulty we experience, it seems to me that that creates the opening or the opportunity that, would not, that we would not have had, uh, that opportunity would not have been created had we not had the difficulty. And of course, the opportunity is for us to be big in consciousness, for us to rise up, for us to know, I mean really know and practice a greater spiritual truth. Do you know how when things get really, really bad, uh, and you've done everything you know how to do, and you just kind of like go, oh, I don't know, I don't know what else to do. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I, I, I've got to find a new, uh, I don't know what, a new uh, way to be in the world. Um, what I see today, there's just so much heartbreak in the world today, you know, I mean, uh, the portion of the congregation that I have been able to stay in touch with, people's lives continue on, and people continue to have big challenges, people have big, big difficulties. But I am certain that all that we are going through is to make us into better people. That's why we're going through it, so that all this potential that is within us can rise to the surface and be an expression in the world. The world could really benefit from the best that is within each and every one of us, don't you think? I certainly do. So maybe, like, um, the Greek myth, I love Greek mythology, and the ancient Greek myth of Sisyphus is that Sisyphus was doomed uh, to push a boulder up the side of a mountain, and every time when he got close, close, close to the top, the boulder would roll back down and he would have to start again. And that was his, you know, that, that, that's, that was his punishment, right? So his victory, though, if I'm thinking about it, his victory would be that if he is aware of what is being done, you know, that he is aware that the game is I push the boulder up and the boulder rose down. And that's just my dharma. That's just my life. That's what I'm here to do, you know, in his, in, in his case. Now, I believe we are being grown in today's world. That's, this is what's happening, you know. It's not supposed to all calm down and we just go back to the way it was. I'm certain that is not supposed to be, that we are supposed to evolve and grow and heal, we will be different on the other side of this. How will we be? Hopefully, hopefully, we will be kinder, we will be gentler, we'll be more loving, more conscious, more compassionate. Many things in our life are not in our control. What I do control, though, always is my attitude. What I do control is my response to situations. I am responsible for my experience of the experience. Let me say it that way. I'm responsible for my experience of the experience. The experience doesn't just happen to me or on me or at me in any way like that. We don't just have to react 
You know, I, I just know that we are more conscious than that. We, as beings who practice this teaching, we are so much more than we give ourselves credit for. for so I'm responsible for how I go through this time. How we are now, now, this is important. How we are now, how we are being in our consciousness now is preparing us for what we will experience when all of this is over and we are back to what we would call normal or the new normal or whatever we may go uh, call it. See, it's up to me to interpret what happens. It's up to me what to do with, with what's happening, right? And so you can think about it you know, any way you want, you know, but know that it's but how you think about it, that is how it's going to happen for you, right? So we are, we are engaged in a creative process now that's going to be out picturing in the days and weeks and months and, and, and years ahead. So what do you choose to see? Whatever you choose to see, I believe that will be true for you. See, because the truth is everything is working for our highest and greatest good right now. Everything, everything, even though it doesn't look like it, I know that everything is working for our highest good. Everything is actually, even in the process, I'll go so far to say that I believe that everything is in the process of getting better. Yeah, all the time. I think things are getting better all the time. I believe that God is a principle of life and that that principle of life is always for an expansion of itself. God is always for greater life. Greater life. You know, this is not based on external evidence. It's the, it's, it's, it's the principle itself. Remember, every soul has their own journey. And that journey of every soul's evolution is vast. You know, more than, more than we can conceive. You know, so the Bible says this. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away. Hmm. So I think what that means is any distinction, any difference between them, that there is a heavenly state of consciousness and an earthly state of consciousness, that will be gone. And it will all be one uplifted, expansive, loving consciousness. You know, our experience of life on earth will be heavenly. You know, we are all doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing in terms of the evolution of our soul. And so if this is true for us, it's true for other people as well. Everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing for their soul to evolve. We don't need to judge what they're doing, right? That doesn't help us. In fact, it actually holds us back. The universe works on us. See, I think we think that we're going to pray, we're going to become more conscious, and the universe is somehow the universe is going to do something to the situation. But that's not how it works. You know, we, we pray and we meditate and we affirm and we try to listen more and all of these things. The universe is working on us. That's what's taking place here. How often have we gone through things we did not think we would ever get through? There's probably not a person listening today who hasn't gone through things, and at the time we were going through them, we thought, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Some difficulty or the loss of a loved one. And yet, we did get through it. We are getting through it. You know, we're still here. We gain the knowledge, actually, of, of how strong, how capable we are by going through different things. So I think that part of how we heal um, is by noticing, or we say in classes often that awareness, having greater awareness is the beginning of, of, of healing things, you know? Uh, and so today, it seems like there's just a lot in the air, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff in the air. Every area not aligned with truth, it seems to me, is going to get tougher. You know, that, that the areas uh, in our personal life, the areas in the collective, where we're not aligned with truth, it's going to get tougher. And, and what that is, is just a call for us to think it and do it and live it and express it in a different way. You know, that we have to trust and we have to surrender and we have to forgive and we have to call on God again and again and again. You know, the universe is demanding that we be spiritually mature. That's what I think is happening right now. The universe is saying, okay, you've had a really long adolescence. It's time to grow up. It's time to be really, really big. So let's do that now when we pray together. So if you would turn your attention inward with me for a moment. Let's open our consciousness today 
to God's infinite presence, to God's loving grace, to God's perfect health, to God's boundless abundance, to all of the good that God is, we know is right where we are. We are connected with God and therefore we are connected with the good of God. We are also all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. In the mind, in the heart of God, there's only one. And together we are all it. So in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us today. I speak the word that healing is happening spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically for each and every one of us. In any place in our life where we have felt separate or apart from God, I claim an awareness of oneness, that a wave of divine love is just washing over each and every one of us right now. And not only are we connected with God, but we feel our connection with each other in our community and all beings everywhere. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, and parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And we affirm that God is right where they are. We bless our church and we bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together. So today we let the love that is within our hearts emanate out from us and surround our globe, touching all people everywhere as a healing salve, a balm, a relief. We let this prayer be such loving, powerful energy that there is no one and no place that is not touched by it in a healthy, positive, life-affirming way. So in our mind's eye now, we see a world that is peaceful and loving and harmonious. And from a place deep within ourselves, we wish well to all people everywhere. Peace, peace, peace. And with a full heart, for all that has been said, I say, thank you, God. This is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen.